Okay guys, so our last bargaining rule is utilitarian rule. Well, it basically says the following. Well, why do we treat each individual, each negotiator equally? Well, it matters how much they sort of are enthusiastic about this bargaining problem. Maybe one guy cares very little about uh, this problem, but the other guy takes incredibly large utilities uh, out of this, you know, surplus maybe. And so we should respect those, uh, you know, negotiators' preferences. Uh, so we, we shouldn't be treating them equally, right? So the utilitarian rule, therefore, uh, for any bargaining problem is defined simply by arg max. X is coming from S. Uh, we basically maximize this summation, I from 1 to N, Xi. That's it, okay? Uh, so what we basically do, so this summation is x1 plus x2 plus all the way plus xn. So we basically think of like each individual is perfect, sub, perfectly substitutable. So if one agent gets incredibly high utility, well, then we should give this guy more and more surplus. If one guy is really doesn't care much about this bargaining problem, so uh, as, therefore we should give him less and less and less uh, surplus, okay? Well, this is not necessarily single-valued unless the bargaining problem is strictly convex. Uh, I'm going to talk about those examples. Uh, it violates individual rationality, obviously, but you can just say uh, this, uh, the, these x's are coming from i, the individual irrational, so i, s, rather than s. That's perfectly fine. You, we can do that. And it also violates scale invariance. I mean, if we scale up or down the preference uh, sort of utilities, the outcome will differ. Uh, but that's the entire point, right? Because the utilities are very important according to utilitarian rule. Um, however, nicely, it satisfies proto-optimality, so the solutions are always to be proto-optimal, and it, this, this rule satisfies translation invariance. Okay, well, here is one uh, example, the same example I keep doing. Um, so, according to this rule, it basically, the argument that is maximizing x1 plus x2, and remember the set S here is, uh, is coming from this. So x2 equals, so basically this curve is x2 equals squared of 1 minus x1. So if you solve this, how, well, simple, instead of x2, just write this one. So it becomes x1 plus squared of 1 minus x1. So call it pi, take the derivative with respect to x1, uh, set it equal to zero and solve for x1. Well, if you do that, x1 is going to be 3 over 4, and when you plug it back here, x2 is going to be 1 half. So therefore, the utilitarian solution for this problem is that player 1 is going to get 3 over 4 utility, and player 2 is going to get 1 over 2 utility. Well, uh, what is the surplus that is going to ensure them that they get this? Well, simple. So player 1 use this one. So u1y equals 1 minus y. So u1y is going to be 3 over 4. So that means the surplus is equal to 1 over 4. Okay? So according to utilitarian rule, therefore, player 1 should get quarter of the surplus and player 2 should get... Oh, I'm sorry. Player 2 should get quarter of the surplus. Player 1 should get 3 quarter of the surplus. Uh, mainly because... Uh, uh, he gets more utility out of uh, this bargaining problem. All right. Well, what about the other example uh, we keep doing? So instead of uh, utility of y equals squared of y, we have uh, both agents being uh, risk neutral. Well, in this case, oops, remember my bargaining set was a straight line. So this one. Um, so how do I do that? Well, maximize x1 plus x1 subject to x2 equals 1 minus x1, right? So, again, if you draw the uh, 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 level curve of x1 plus x2, I'm sorry, and uh, if you basically use this as the constraint, you're going to see that uh, the constraint and the level curves are going to be on top of each other. That means, uh, I'm sorry for all this mess, 
that means the utilitarian solution to this problem, let's call this bargaining problem TD, where D is the, remember, the, uh, the zero, zero point. The utilitarian solution to this is all those points. All right, so it's x1, x2, such that x1 plus x2 is equal to 1. Uh, well, obviously, x1, x2 is in r plus square, such that x1 plus x2 is equal to 1. So this straight line, or x2 is equal to 1 minus x1. Doesn't matter, I just rewrite it this way. So all those points are going to give us a solution according to the utilitarian rule, which basically means any y in 0, 1 is a solution, okay? Um, well, as I said, the utilitarian rule is not necessarily single-valued because here, this bargaining problem, the set is not strictly convex, it's convex. Uh, the, the previous example, it was strictly convex and therefore the solution was unique. All right. Uh, well, when the solution is not unique, obviously it's problem because, uh, well, the, the rule doesn't really tell us anything. It basically says any way of distributing the surplus is fine. Uh, yeah, but can I be more specific? Well, well, then maybe using utilitarian rule in this instance and in, in, in that type of problems is not the appropriate choice. We should be using some other rule, maybe Nash. Uh, or, a, or egalitarian rule or uh, kalai smordensky rule, um, you know, all of them were giving us a unique solution, remember. Okay, so this is what the utilitarian rule is. Um, I hope that was clear.